land of the free, home of the brave. Our actions speak otherwise. You see that in the hate. You see that in the senseless killings that have happened. I don't feel like myself or people that look like me are being represented by that song and by that moment. Nothing would be more tragic than to stop at this point. Be concerned about your brother. You may not be on track. But either we go up together or we go down together. We love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag. To say, get that son of a bitch off the field, out, he's fired. He's fired! We have an opportunity to make America a better nation. And students all over the South started sitting in at lunch counters. And I knew that as they were sitting in, they were really standing up for the best in the American dream taking the whole nation back to those great wells of democracy which were dug deep by the founding fathers in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. I thought I knew the level of hate and racism that we had in our country, but I had no clue. I had no idea how deep this really went. that either. But the president says he wants that peaceful protest to stop. Says those players should be fired. At a young age, I saw football as a way to get rid of my anger. I was angry. At the things that I saw my mom go through, I was angry at the things that, that I was going through. I just was an angry kid. My parents weren't together. I was the last of my mom's five kids. My mom had her first child when she was 17. I didn't really understand or appreciate the work that she put in to make ends meet for us. You know, as, as I got older, I started looking in the cupboards and we didn't have any food. I started looking in the fridge, we didn't have any food. I'm like, what's going on here? And I realized that she wasn't doing well. Motivation really changed after I saw that. Once I started getting recruited, which was, you know, pretty early freshman, sophomore year, it's like, okay, you know, I can, I can go to the, I can go to the NFL and I can get my mom out of her situation. I never have to look back. I'm tired of her living like this. I want more for her, I want more for my family. Um, let's get it. It was special for me to get drafted. And I felt that. But you really have more anxiety and fear once you're drafted. They can still release you, especially if you're not first or second round, third round. I was drafted in the fifth round, and so it's likely that, you know, they release you. I'm thinking, if, if I drop a ball, they're gonna cut me. success very early it was it was so much fun for me it was a it was a relief it was a relief to, to know that I that I could do it and that I had made it and um, 
that I was, I was making my family proud. You know, I cried during the national anthem then. You know, I would stand there in disbelief, like, <laughs> I'm here. I, I did it. <laughs> Driving to work one day, I'm scrolling down my feed at a stoplight. I see another video of an unarmed black man being killed by the police. I just broke down to tears, just crying, crying at the stop of you. I this is unbelievable. Why, why is this happening? What's going on in our country? Why, why do people look like, that look like me, or look like my dad, or my uncles, or aunts, or grandma, or grandpa? Why, why are they doing this to them? What do they do wrong? I don't think people really understand what it's like to look in the mirror and feel like. You're not important. Nobody gives a f if you didn't play football. You're irrelevant. Because of your skin tone. You don't even, you don't, I don't choose this. I was born this, this was me. So it's like I said, it's like, what, did I do something wrong? Or I just was born, so I'm wrong. Once I saw Terrence Crutcher, Eric Garner, Walter Scott not living another day to see their family, I knew that there was something that had to be done. I prayed on it, I slept on it, and the next day, it's game day. I felt like if I didn't take action at this point in time in my life, that I had missed the opportunity that I, that I had. Everything changed on that day, September 11, 2016, after we decided to kneel. And I found myself in the center of the storm. You shouldn't be playing, you shouldn't be there. Maybe you shouldn't be in the country. The booze in the stadium, people yelling, stand up, telling me to leave the country. Death threats, the hate mail, the hate on social media, Twitter, Facebook was alarming. Still can't understand the amount of hatred towards somebody that's basically asking everyone to feel compassionate about others. The protest was never against anybody. This protest is really just trying to hold us accountable to the things that we say that we believe in. It's about equality. It's about justice for all. We didn't know that looking down, you know, a couple years later that people weren't weren't gonna be playing in the league because of it. We didn't we didn't know any of that. Being a fifth round pick, I really had no security. I made money, I had saved money, but I wasn't set for life. I think a lot of people assume that when you're drafted, you're set for life. I knew it could affect my contract, but when you feel something in your gut, you feel something in your soul, like you go against that, you'll regret it the whole rest of your life. And at that point, 
what is money? Spend your whole life being motivated by doing something for your family, for your mother, the person that sacrificed and took care of you, that loved you, that was always there, that always had your back. How do I say that I'm taking care of my family if I'm not standing up for people that look like us? He sought respect for the dignity of all humankind. He wanted poor and working people of all ethnicities and faiths from every region of the country to join together across the boundaries constructed to divide us. But I'm proud to say that that hurt and negativity was used for something positive. I invest my time in reading, taking classes, getting out in the community, working to mentor, working to do ride-alongs, working with the police, reading to kids. Any opportunity that I get, every opportunity that I get, I'm there. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here trying to do better and make the country a better place. And I, I can't do that by just protesting, by just getting on a knee. Keep up the good work, bro. Right on, man, right on. Say something about uh, to the veterans. Yeah, hang out. That'd be a, a morale boost, man. Yeah. I do think that the protest has been enlightening in so many ways. The fact that people thought it was so disrespectful to our military, to our veterans, to people that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, has really opened our, our eyes to the neglect that our veterans are receiving. Oh, snap, yo! <laughs> y'all the best, man, for real, man. Y'all don't know what y'all do for us, man. Okay, for sure, thank you. Damn, that's real. We got to watch you guys, like, all day. You kneeling the other day? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank You know, when we began the protest a couple years ago, we always got the question, you know, what's it gonna take you for you to stop or when will you stop? And I think people don't realize that this is, it, it never ends. I'm committed to activism the rest of my life.